Hello and welcome to the Legislative Report with your State Representative Mark Gillen representing the 128th District in Berks County. Well, Representative Gillen has said that uh, Berks County is at the center of a particular problem, the solution to which has plagued state lawmakers for decades. And that problem I'm talking about is the incredible burden of high property taxes. So as I welcome Representative Gillen to his program, I'm going to ask you to elaborate a little bit more on that statement. Uh, thank you very much for uh, having me back, Herb. It's always my pleasure to be with you. Uh, let me approach it from several different perspectives. <clears throat> One of them would be constitutional, philosophic. I believe that a person should be secure in their own home. I think that's fundamental to American liberty. Uh, I do not think that we should be in a situation uh, in the United States of America, and I'm focused obviously on my district and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I don't think our seniors and I don't think our hardworking families should be confronted with the prospect of being removed from their own home. I can't think of anything more antithetical to the American spirit than owning your home at one level, having fully paid off your mortgage, and then on the other hand, being asked to lease or rent your property uh, from the government for two, three, five, six, eight thousand dollars a year, and then be removed from the home that you have paid off the mortgage uh, for, then be removed from that home because of an inability to pay a tax that you don't have the capacity to pay because you're a senior on a fixed income. It denies home ownership uh, to families, uh, and one of the most stabilizing influences that we have in this culture is home ownership. Uh, we live proximal to Reading, where there's over 50% rental housing stock. I'd like to see uh, seniors and families stay in those homes. I'd like to see folks that desire upward mobility in the American dream to be able to truly own those homes and move to an alternative funding stream. You raised the question of the epicenter. Yeah. We're the very center of the problem. Uh, I've said that uh, before, but there's statistical evidence. I think some people would attribute this to uh, demagoguery or hyperbole. It is not. Uh, we've looked at census data, and the Tax Foundation has put some of this information together. They studied 792 counties in the United States of America with populations of 65,000 or more, and we're about 411,000 in Berks County. So we were a qualifier for the study. And I asked people, where would you think we ended up <clears throat> in that study? Nearly the top 10%, and high numbers aren't good numbers, in terms of uh, property tax consumption as a percentage of medium income. Because what really matters here is when you look at the property tax, what is a person's ability right. to pay? And we're nearly the top of the heap in the United States of America. And we rank fourth in Pennsylvania based on the statistics that I looked at and the freshest numbers that I had to kind of paint a mosaic of this challenge and, and problem are several years old. But I suspect it's probably only got worse for Berks Countyans. And as you mentioned, this is a problem that really attacks our seniors who are finding, uh, and we've all heard these incredibly sad stories about people who lose their homes over a few thousand dollars that they owe. Someone else kind of swoops in and picks up that property. It's worth far more. And, and the payments that these folks would make if you, if you divided the property tax bill by 12 in the monthly payments <clears throat> actually work out to be higher than their mortgage payments they made when they were paying off the property. Right. And <clears throat> I think it falls far short of the mark to say that we're going to reform this system or we're going to reduce your property taxes. Uh, I think we have to move towards... Uh, elimination. I think of my own mother, she's 85 years old, and look at the diminished income, uh, meager Social Security without any right. outside uh, help or influence, at least beyond uh, her family. But if you look at another influence, and I think this is toxic in Pennsylvania, we've got a number of young people that graduate uh, from our colleges, who have skills, that could make significant contributions. Uh, that decide not to stay in Pennsylvania 
because of the punitive property tax and they move on to other places where they can actually uh, own their home. So we have a substantive problem here, but George Mason University looked at this by virtue of a study. They analyzed what is it that pushes people out of a state from the tax side of the equation. Now, there's a variety of reasons why people leave a state. Um, you're probably going to head to Florida at some point. You want warm weather. Well, it may be grandchildren. I, I, I would agree that it isn't the only influence. But when you look at tax influence and you look at income tax and sales tax and property taxes and you look at the menu of the taxes and you say, what is it that propels people out of a state at the highest rate? you will find that the property tax is influencing people's decisions to leave a state at three times the rate of another tax. This is not something we're questioning any longer. Right. This is not something we're significantly analyzing. These are the numbers. These are the statistics. And these movements are born of necessity. It's not an option. If you cannot pay your property tax, and you don't have the prospect of living affordably in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, you just begin to look in the panorama of other places, whether it's Delaware or North Carolina. But here's the worst part. All right, once this person tragically leaves the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and I think we've got as much to offer here as any other state, when they leave, that other state becomes the recipient and the benefactor of their consumptive-oriented taxes. So now that person consumes, and they bolster the sales tax base in that other state. They'll take their annuity, they'll take, if they're a retiree with the state system, wherever it happens to be in the way of assets, bank accounts, Social Security income, pensions, now they begin to consume and spend in another place. And so those states are the benefactors, if you will, of the wealth of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, people that want to stay. And so I see that the, the tragedy is multifaceted. But let's look at it from another side of the equation. What if we were able to get our arms wrapped around this property tax challenge and we became the magnet? instead of the Delawares and North Carolinas or Tennessees or other states of regard as being relatively low in their tax burden, what if Pennsylvania became the signature place and people would identify Pennsylvania as the location where they could live secure in the retirement years, start a business, raise a family, and we would gain the advantage of all those consumptive-based taxes as well as that income. So we described the problem, and that, as it exists in Pennsylvania now, we just, you just described what could happen mm -hmm. if, if we could get your, as you say, your arms wrapped around this. So there have been a number of solutions, uh, proposals suggested over the past two, three, four decades about this problem. None have really gained traction or have been real effective. Let's talk about the latest effort to try to wrap your arms around this problem. And I think it's excellent that we do that, Herb. But let me just reference, and this is a graphic that's probably going to be shown on screen, but I have a map of Pennsylvania, and it's colorized as to the red and the blue zone. It's not a political map. Uh, the blue zone would be school district tax collections that were relatively low, a low property tax burden based on the school property tax. You would see most of the Commonwealth geographically in the blue zone. The red zone centered mainly around the southeast quadrant of the state, of which Berks County is the epicenter of that. From 1991 to 2005, many school districts in our county have experienced property tax increases of 200 percent or more. Now, I say that because there's distinctions in different geographic locations in Pennsylvania. Therefore, the approach is going to be somewhat in contrast once you look into a rural Pennsylvania county versus a more populous southeast Pennsylvania county. And therefore, it's going to influence that legislator's voting sure. pattern with regard uh, to the problem. Now, I said we're the epicenter. And I think the chart, the graphics, the numbers, statistics actually uh, bear that out. But what we have to do with any plan that's looking across the board is to pass it out of the state house, right. out of the state senate, and procure <laughs> the governor's signature. So we have a variety of products out there. I think the art of getting this done is to satisfy people in the red and the blue zone, if you will. And I think 
that has proven to be the challenge. I sat in on a finance committee hearing uh, just the other day, uh, Seth Groves Bill 2230. Uh, Representative Jim Cox, a friend and colleague from Berks County, as House Bill 1776. And as of this moment, it's not in a text form, but I've discussed it exhaustively with him uh, in principle. Representative Calda Jerome uh, from Berks County, a good friend who represents uh, Reading, has another product. Representative Darrell Medcalf has another property tax product. And all of them do slightly different things. Now, we could, we could chew up the rest of the program here with what each of them do, but let's take a look at a couple different approaches, and then I'll express my preference right at the beginning. Okay. I would like to see a statewide mosaic in terms of the approach to the property tax, because I said at the onset, this is about core values. This is about freedom. This is about the Constitution. Uh, I think somebody in Elk County ought to own their property free and clear just as much as someone in Berks County. I want that. I'm not interested in a nickel's worth of property tax. I'm not interested in renting from the government at a diminished rate. I'm not interested in a lower lease number from the government. I think the properties ought to be free and clear. That applies equally to the school-based property tax. We would all associate school-based property tax as being probably the most onerous. I got my tax bill recently from the county and the borough in the, in the aggregate, and later this year I'll be getting my school-based property tax. That's the one that I really fear. <laughs> it's, a bi it's a bigger number. And so I'm interested in property tax elimination across the school, the municipality, your local borough or township, as well as, as, as the county level. And of course, you say, well, that sounds like a pipe dream. Um, but if I were czar for the day, this is my goal. That's the target that I have to shoot at. And if I could wave my legislative magic wand, I would target elimination based on my view of the Constitution and philosophical approach to freedom and being clear of the burden of the property tax. So when you take that money away in terms of eliminating the property taxes at all levels, school, county, municipal, there's a hole that left to be filled. What's the best way to fill that hole in your mind? Well, most discussions begin with what are we going to substitute this amount of money for? What are we going to replace this with? And I'm a little bit at variance with the approach that says in a static way, we've got 10 plus billion dollars here that's got to be replaced. What are we going to tax the people with? I think we need school finance reform. I think we have to look at cost controls. I think we have to seriously look at mandate relief. We've got to look at the cost side of the equation first. We've got to find ways to reduce our costs. Because if you have this level of explosive growth in governance, we're going to get punished by a different tax. Now, I would assert that the property tax is the most onerous, and I've delineated the reasons why, but we have to get our costs under control. And I think the seriousness about that discussion has not been a prominent feature of the debate. And I would like to raise the profile and the threshold of that discussion in the public psyche. When you look at personnel costs, for example, uh, look at pension costs, and they're exploding. And we're going to have legacy costs even if we move eventually to a defined contribution plan. Once we look at our actual cost control, then we flip to the side of the equation that most people are discussion, discussing, and that's the substitutionary principles. So from where you stand, leaving that hole after you eliminate property taxes isn't just a matter of finding another tax or increasing another tax, consumptive tax or whatever, to fill that hole, but maybe decreasing the size of that hole by controlling spending as well. I think that's exactly the approach <clears throat> that we need to take. And if we don't take that approach, this whole process is going to be born for disappointment. I don't see any alternative but to reduce the size and the cost of our governance. Now, we can take a moment to introduce some of the concepts that are out there, enhancing the sales tax, for example. I'm not embracing any particular tax approach. 
I want to see the cost controls first. Um, others have discussed a personal income tax, an earned income tax, a tax on services. If you look at the menu of the options that are out there, that's where most of the heavy lifting obviously has to be done because those are where most of the dollars are. Let me have you hold your thought right there. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll wrap up our discussion on property taxes and some things we can do maybe to deal with those and some legislative solutions that are out there, but also deal with some financial issues uh, on, the, on the state budget side as well. We want to talk about that as well. So Representative uh, Mark Gillen will be back, his legislative report, in just a moment. Did you know that Fort Indian Town Gap, located in Lebanon County, is home to Pennsylvania's only Veterans Memorial? C.J. Frederick of Westchester, Bucks County, submitted the winning design that now honors those men and women who have sacrificed their lives in defending this great country. Dedicated to the Commonwealth on October 7, 2001, the Veterans Memorial is surrounded by freestanding walls and houses an amphitheater, which can accommodate large crowds during an event. Strategically placed in the front of the amphitheater is a tomb that reminds visitors of those who gave their lives protecting the freedoms of this nation. The design suggests a war-damaged structure in which Frederick wanted to impress upon those visiting the horrific arena of war. Now you know. Did you know that in the corridors in the first floor of the capital of Pennsylvania, there are nearly 400 individual mosaics? The idea for creating these intricate tiles was first suggested by Henry C. Mercer in 1902. A year later, he received the commission to prove 16,000 square feet of pavement tiles for the Great Rotunda and corridors of the new State Capitol building in Harrisburg. Mercer set about designing subjects for approximately 400 mosaics. He chose as his general theme the history of Pennsylvania, and he soon realized that his tiles could tell stories. Although the arrangement seems random, the mosaics are very thoughtfully placed in the floor. The tile sequence is roughly chronological, beginning at one end with the scenes depicting the Native Americans. The mosaics progress into the story of European habitation in the New World and encompass the Commonwealth's triumph through process and intervention. Now you know. Welcome back to Legislative Report with your state representative, Mark Gillen, representing the 128th district in Berks County. Uh, we're talking on this program about property taxes, about the high burden of property taxes, how it affects the lives of people in Berks County, especially seniors on fixed incomes. And we're also talking about some potential solutions. Now, before the break, we talked about kind of set the problem up, uh, what you believe is the answer or where the answer lies in trying to, to solve property taxes. But let's talk about some specific bills that are out there now, one of which you co-sponsored, which is a potential solution to the property tax issue. And that's one represented by, or, or introduced and sponsored by a, re a colleague, of your, re colleague of yours, pardon me, Representative Seth Grove. Yes, yeah, Seth has introduced a bill, uh, House Bill 2230. Uh, it got an airing before the Finance Committee. And there was quite a bit of intense back and forth uh, on this. I think legislature is seriously interested in a solution, but there is certainly uh, some debate about what's going to fix this problem uh, for people all over the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Seth's approach is local option oriented. Uh, that would be an enhanced county sales tax. We already have an enhanced sales tax uh, in several counties in Pennsylvania, most notably uh, in Philadelphia, and by referendum would give you the opportunity uh, on the personal income tax or the earned income tax uh, side to vote an increase for commensurate reduction uh, in property tax. There hasn't been substantial appetite uh, for the latter approach when given the opportunity to increase taxes in those areas. I think there's some suspicion, uh, not about his bill or Seth's integrity at all, uh, with regard to increasing another menu of taxes without a consummate elimination of right. property taxes, uh, people feel that perhaps we're going to end up getting punished on both sides of the equation. 
Uh, I think the local option uh, ought to be given careful consideration if we cannot get something consummate across the finish line throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I know that I was the jury commissioner uh, of Pennsylvania, uh, at rather Berks County, and I was able, uh, working with the legislature, to eliminate my own position in, in Berks County. Not too many people do that, eliminate their own <laughs> jobs. You know, your family kind of questions it when you come back home, I've eliminated my job, but actually it took many months for me to do it. But uh, seven months into my elected term, I sat down with then Governor Mark Schweiker and signed a jury commissioner elimination bill. The legislature empowered us in Berks County to have a local option approach. Of course, now that I'm in the legislature, uh, I co-sponsored legislation to allow any county in Pennsylvania the opportunity to eliminate uh, that elected uh, position of jury commissioner. So that's a local option, 1776, House Bill 1776, which at this taping right now is not available in a text form, but I have discussed extensively with the prime sponsor of the bill, uh, Representative Jim Cox, the, the implications of the bill. That would that would be an approach that would be statewide and enhancing a menu of taxes uh, working toward the elimination of the school-based property tax. Uh, Representative Medcalf has worked on legislation in the past uh, that would approach all of the taxes. That would be the school-based and municipal uh, taxes for elimination of property taxes throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, again, relying on a mix of alternative taxes. I would say philosophically, I'm most comfortable with consumptive-oriented taxes because I've got a choice. When I go to uh, the dollar store <laughs> or Walmart or a higher-end store, I've got a decision-making process that I enter uh, into there. And though I've got four daughters, some would argue, well, Mark, you know, you've got young children and they really consume mostly food. <laughs> and I don't envision any scenario uh, where I would support a widespread tax on food. Not just because I've got four daughters in the house, but uh, we certainly don't want to punish people who are in need of, of necessities. And so I think we need to look at enhancements on the sales tax side of the equation. Certainly an expansion would be appropriate under any one of these plans. And uh, depending upon the mix of enhancements or broadening the sales tax, some have even suggested of actually raising the sales tax uh, number. It creates problems, though, uh, with regard to border regions, uh, where you go down to Delaware County and you can cross border it uh, into Delaware, and they don't have that type of consumptive tax model. And so for every plan, there's going to be a litany of tweaks. I've said before, that when you're done writing your bill, it's probably going to land on the cutting room floor rather quickly. Right. And uh, I think that's the destiny of these bills, which that shouldn't dissuade anybody from the process. But I think we realize that whatever the product is, it's going to be substantially amended. It's going to be tweaked. And there's the rule of unintended consequences. Once a bill eventually is passed, there's going to have to be some recalibrating when we look at it and it goes down the highway of time. I want to wrap up our discussion on the property tax issue by just pointing out a problem that I think uh, lawmakers, one, one individual lawmaker, uh, at least in the House of Representatives, who's one voice out of 203, uh, what they're challenged with when they're trying to solve a problem like property taxes. I don't think there's any issue that epitomizes the challenge more of trying to come up with a solution that fits the entire state which is 67 counties, which is very, a, a very diverse state. Some counties are wealthier, mm. some counties are poor. Some counties like the fact that their schools, they, they love the fact that their schools are funded through property taxes. They have no issue with them. They can mm. afford them. Mm -hmm. Some counties, people are being stick, uh, are, are thrown out of their homes mm. because of, of property taxes. So uh, just the challenge, comment if you would for me on a, a second, on the challenge of trying to come up with something that fits every county and build that consensus to, to get something to pass. You have disparate school funding formulas. Right. Some of the most intensive problems, ironically, don't exist in the urban areas. Uh, they're substantially well-funded by the state. I know that in our urban core, uh, Redding's millage on the property tax side, school-based property tax, is substantially lower than other parts of the county. And so even within a region, 
you're going to have disparate perspectives on how this should be approached, but so much more statewide. But I like to put a human face on this. I spend a lot of time in the community walking, jogging, interacting, riding bicycle. It's not a day passes where I'm out in the community. Someone doesn't stop me in the food store or just in a recreational endeavor. And the human face that I see on this, um, I think there has to be something that tugs my heart, that I've got a constituent out there that's on the very edge, that's going to lose their home soon unless something changes. I have constituents out there who say, Mark, I'm going to leave the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I may leave this community and go somewhere else because I can no longer afford to be there. And I think there's an ingredient that's oftentimes missing in a sterile discussion that we have men and women, seniors, working families, children attending schools. They'd like their children to finish in those schools. They'd like K through 12. They want that experience for them. But this property tax burden is denying our communities a wholeness, a homogenous sense of community that everyone is looking for. When I moved to a small town, um, I enjoyed the fact that we had people that were there for generations. And there's something about that place that they liked. There's something about that place they wanted to raise their children, grandchildren there. And some of those very same people are right now at the cusp of being forced out of a community uh, that they're literally their ancestors grew up in. And if there's anything that I can do as an elected official to make a difference in that realm, uh -huh. Uh, it behooves me to move rapidly towards a solution. Well, we're going to have to leave the property tax discussion for now. We can have continue that at a later date. But I want to take in the final couple minutes just a little time to update people on our, on our state budget. We have a brand new state budget proposal out there. It's going to take effect at the end of June. Uh, that's being hashed out right now. Appropriations Committee in the House has had hearings. All the state agencies have come in and offered their uh, defense of why they need the money that they need. Just in these last minute or so, just tell us quickly where you stand budget prior with your budget priorities and what kind of budget you're going to be fighting for. Well, I said at the beginning of this discussion that we had to look at our spending. And I think this administration is looking at spending and it was born of necessity. Our income is down, our expenses continue to rise, and there was a recalibration that was necessary. The people that I talk to in the community are no longer interested in tax, borrow, and spend. We have to move past that. We cannot put this burden on the next generation. And so as much as anything else, I'm going to be looking for a leaner budget. Is not to say that we won't recalibrate inside of these proposals. Uh, I'm a graduate of Kutztown University, and I was with the President um, Savalos at the appropriations hearing uh, meeting. I spent time with him afterwards. And yes, I am concerned at the state system of higher education funding level. Yes, I am concerned about meeting our constitutional responsibility to public education. So we're going to take a hard look at every arena of the state budget. Uh, to make sure that our population, our students, are being serviced in an equitable way. Well, the budget is a work in process, as is the so potential solutions to property taxes. You're going to be working on both those issues. We'll have you back to update us on those things and on your efforts uh, in future months. But for now, I want to thank you for joining us and, uh, and appreciate your time. I look forward to the next visit, Herb. Thank you. And that is all the time we have for this month's program. If you have any questions for Representative Mark Gillen, on any state-related matter. Uh, you can contact him through his website or at his district office. All that information will be on your screen in just a moment. Uh, thank you for watching and please join us next time for Legislative Report with your state representative, Mark Gillen.